Welcome back. So second half of the week, as I mentioned uh, last time, uh, Jeff was getting ready to lay up uh, another upper skin for that one elevator uh, because of the slots that were cut out of it. And uh, here you can see Jeff and Devin are doing exactly that. And uh, at the point now here where they're putting the bag on there. So it doesn't take long to lay up a skin like that. Um, it has a couple of bits of core in there, but uh, nothing that complicated. So we'll be able to start fresh with that and not have to fix the one that had the slots in it. And meanwhile, I'm working on uh, fixing or fitting these um, trim panels in the cabin. As you, you can see there, I had the uh, front uh, left kick panel there in place and trimmed up nicely. So it just kind of closes out that whole little side area there and looks nice as per the way I designed it so many years ago. And uh, there's the one on the right hand side as well and of course these will go up to uh, off to upholstery and get that same uh, black vinyl put on those so i think that that one actually came out really well just it just fits nicely and fills in that area there so you're not going to see sort of the carbon of course we'll have carpet on the floor and uh, there's one of the ones for the rear um you know behind the seat and you can see i slotted it out there for where the little bracket is that uh, has the gas strut that holds the door open and uh, that's the one that had a little patch on there because um, it had a little blemish from when it was laid up but it's fitting really nicely around there it's going to look good with the vinyl on it and uh, there's the one on the other side so it didn't take me too long to get those um, all sorted out you know just have to trim around um, the edges there just to make it fit in there nicely because uh, it all comes with flanges when it's all laid up um, so anyway that, those ones are looking good and uh, now it's time to get on with um, making these new uh, hinge brackets for the elevator. And of course, this is the first time that I've had to deal with um, machining the 7075 aluminum. And uh, it presented a bit of a challenge initially. And uh, I had to spend a few hours getting uh, set up with the right um, speeds on the spindle and the right feed rate on the machine so it wasn't um, sort of chattering along and causing problems. Um, and here you can see I've put a couple of test holes in there and just trying things out just to make sure that I'm not going to have any uh, issues and I ended up actually breaking my 3 16th inch bit um, when I was just doing a test run but anyway I got, I got it all figured out it took me about a couple of hours to, to get it sort of dialed in and uh, then it was off to the races and I actually ended up spending pretty much um, you know Wednesday afternoon getting it dialed in and then all of Thursday and all of Friday running these paths to cut the um, pieces because I had 16 pieces in all to cut and uh, meanwhile Jeff and Devin were um, adding sort of some extra layup to these uh, skins there the outer skins for the winglets and uh, unfortunately when we had them in the uh, post cure in the oven the trailing edges there because they didn't have any core on that very trailing edge kind of like went a little bit sort of wavy um, under the heat and so what Jeff's done there is added a bit of lay up there and vacuumed it down and that sort of um, straightened everything out again and uh, added also added a little bit of extra strength to that area so that's uh, fixed that problem and while the uh, machine was running cutting out those brackets I got on with other jobs so here I'm actually creating another fuel line. Um, I actually replaced the three hard lines that we had going in and out of the uh, header tank. I just replaced them with flex lines, um, mainly because where they were transitioning through the bulkhead there it was just really difficult to get to and uh, I wasn't happy, and then this is where the one leak was, I wasn't happy that we were able to actually tighten up those um, fittings correctly and then get it sort of back in there. Anyway, it's kind of hard to explain but I, de I decided just to go with flex lines because that would allow me to uh, create lines that I knew weren't going to leak and uh, I could get them tightened up and then sort of pushed in through that bulkhead and I'll actually end up showing you where that was uh, on the next video I just forgot to get some this time but anyway I managed to get um, you know by uh, Friday afternoon I managed to get the um, all the fuel lines back in there coming from the header tank to the bulkhead and uh, um, sorted out and uh, shouldn't have any problems with uh, any more leaks uh, back there now so that's uh, another little job I didn't expect to do that is now sorted out so I'm gonna and here's that upper um, skin there that uh, Jeff laid up it's all completed now is in the process of just uh, popping it out of the mold 
just starting to get some wedges under there and uh, get it released. So uh, I'll be able to get back on uh, those elevators here next week. And uh, I spent a little bit of time here just um, actually using the Loctite 496, which is kind of like just a version of super glue, to uh, bond those uh, little sensors in place. That's the one there on the transition from the wing to the winglet. And uh, just that's going to um, pick up any strain or any sort of flicks in that area of the skin. And then in here, um, got the one there on the, s the front uh, face of the spa, of the main spa, that you can see it there. And just sort of glued on in place. And of course, those amplifiers that I showed you last time are all there. And I put, put some cable ties and mounts in there afterwards just to hold everything so, um, you know, none of the wires come loose or have any strain on them and then likewise uh, underneath here in the wing there's the uh, the third one and for you guys watching there and looking at the bolts and the washers on the other side they're holding the wing on those are just um, the washers are just temporary um, we'll have much larger washers on there uh, when the wings get bonded on and back on the machine now making quite a bit of progress so although, although I really had to slow uh, my feed rate down there um, in order to you know just make it so my machine doesn't sort of uh, vibrate like crazy because you know this machine isn't set up for milling uh, steel like this and the problem with having such a big long spindle there it only takes um, a little bit of too fast speed there and it can actually just sort of bite into the metal that's cutting and then that causes a big vibration and next thing you know you've got a big problem so uh, anyway slow and uh, steady is the way to go and uh, here you can see just starting to cut out the outside shape of the first of the larger ones and uh, there you can see that large hole in there that's where the um, bearing will be uh, pressed into place and back in the cabin uh, this is what it looks like with the three panels put in place there so the door panel fitted there nicely still don't have the armrest on there we've got the armrest as you've seen a while ago but I just didn't put it in there yet hasn't actually been bolted onto the door yet um, but anyway that's uh, looking nice there and you can see how the panels all sort of fit together and, and as I said we'll have carpet on the floor and uh, meanwhile Jeff and Devin working on um, hinging this little um, outlet door there to let the hot air get out of the bottom of the cowling and uh, Devin's just roughing up the hinges there we're using some of the remaining uh, carbon fiber hinges that we had bought that we used on the gear doors and uh, here's the um, little layup there bonded in on all those hinges bonded onto the door and uh, just using a bit of straight aluminum to make sure that the hinges are perfectly in line. And by the end of the day on Thursday I had uh, five of these ones done. Of course I had to do eight altogether. These are the ones that actually bolt onto the elevator itself. And I had uh, two of these done and another one just about done on the machine. And those are the ones that, that um, bolt onto the, the four plane itself. So there's the uh, third one there getting underway so quite a lot of progress on that on that day but uh, still more to go on Friday and now we're on to Friday morning and shocker we're still on the machine <laughs> still running away there doing the brackets I think um, at this point you know I've got that that's the number four or something going on and got another one of the other ones done uh, with the goal of trying to get it all done by the end of the day and uh, here's Devin uh, just uh, sanding back um, some more of those um, areas there on the gear doors that had the hinges bonded on. And while I was sorting out that fuel leak problem, I also cleaned up uh, some of the wiring as well. There was a few runs that were sort of uh, interfering with other things, so I had to rerun those and uh, get them all sorted out. And here you can see I'm working there in the back in the baggage compartment area. Um, with uh, finishing off that fuel line fix there so quite a lot of just little projects just you know fixing things that weren't done right or just making things a little bit better um, you know you're going to fly this thing you want to make sure everything's sorted out so anyway takes time but uh, it's worth doing and there uh, here's these um, doors now or the door for the um, cowling those hinges bonded into place now so that's just setting up still wet right now but that's another job done and back on the machine I wanted to show you uh, how I do this hole where the bearing is going to be pressed into place so I cut the hole out first um, but I make it undersize a little bit and I do that with the quarter inch uh, end mill 
And uh, here you can see I've got um, this three quarter inch. It's actually uh, one thou under, so it's 0.749 um, reamer. And I just bring it down into that hole. So the hole is around about uh, 0.746 or 5 or something like that. And the reamer takes it out to 0.749. So I just bring it down and then I stand over by the machine and I watch there um, and I'm looking at the Z depth to make sure I don't take it more than a quarter of an inch deep because otherwise it will just run into the plywood underneath and that might cause a problem. So I'm just slowly winding it down um, over while I'm watching um, you know, the Z value over there on the machine. And that's now ready to press a bearing into place, which you'll see happening next week. Yeah. And what Jeff's doing here, uh, with Devin's help, is uh, setting the angle of incidence on the wings. And both of them were about, I think it was 0.4 or 0.6, um, a little bit shy. So need more angle of attack or more angle of incidence. So what he's done, he's got a threaded rod, rod that he's um, anchored into the floor. And he's using that to pull down the trailing edge of the wing and in order to bring the angle of incidence up a little bit and uh, once he has that locked in place then he's going to uh, bond the skin on the top of the strake on the tank there and because um, that's where the twist is is allowed to happen and uh, so once that's bonded on that'll lock it into place and we'll have the correct uh, angle of incidence on uh, both of the wings Toward the end of the day on Friday, I finally got time to install this first of the com antennas in here, and we're just using these basically cheap um, command antennas. They seem to have the least amount of drag, and um, you know works fairly effectively. So I got that one installed in there. And yeah, I need to vacuum out there behind that bulkhead, but I'll get done. And the other one will be on the other side. So uh, that's another job almost completed. And uh, as things were finishing up there on Friday, the last bracket was just getting run on the machine. So we won't have to listen to that noise um, for any time on Monday, which will be nice because it makes a lot of noise when that's running. And lastly, I'll leave you with a bit of a look at the fuselage. This is at 6 o'clock on uh, Friday. The guys had gone for the day. And I was just sort of cleaning up, tidying up a few things. Uh, but anyway, so... Quite a lot of stuff done this week, but uh, next week will be exciting because I can finally get on to doing the things that I wanted to do rather than fixing a bunch of things like, you know, those elevator brackets were something I didn't expect to do and fixing fuel leak or something I didn't have to, I didn't expect to do and rerouting some wiring was something I didn't expect to do. So next week I can get on to uh, hopefully installing um, the linkages for the autopilot servos and getting the aileron servo installed and then work on getting the avionics installed. And uh, Jeff's going to be uh, getting the strakes, um, the strake skins bonded on. 
and the wings are ready to be closed out so once the strakes skins are bonded on the fuselage or sorry the uh, cowling can get the last fitment and then the wings can come come off and then they can get closed out so that's all uh, pretty exciting stuff so things are moving along and uh, a lot of things are going to happen now uh, in the next couple of weeks so um, stay tuned and uh, thanks again for watching and uh, again follow us on instagram if you're interested in doing that and uh, we'll see you next week.